Hey guys, welcome to just outside of Ure, Colorado and welcome to the FJ Summit. Now today I had a really cool opportunity to talk to the chief engineer behind the 2020 Toyota Tacoma and we talked to him about the good stuff and some of the stuff you guys have been curious about such as why does a Tacoma still have drum brakes? My name is Sheldon Brown, uh, chief engineer at Tacoma working in uh, the Toyota North America uh, R&D office. Today here we're looking at the uh, 2020 TRD Tacoma TRD Pro it's our uh, halo vehicle shown this year slightly dusted in our uh, brand new uh, army green hero color uh, the minor model change content is fairly similar uh, among all of our vehicles uh, in particular this one will be featuring our brand new uh, led both high and low beam headlamps um, this uh, headlamp also has an led drl that's um, standard and it also functions as a sequential turn so this will actually change to amber and it'll actually uh, show the direction of the turn sequentially. Also unique to the Pro, uh, we have this um, laser etching here where we actually will say TRD and Pro, so when the actual lamps are on coming down the road, you'll see that. These lamps are uh, brand new. I mentioned they're LED low beam, LED high beam. They throw about a 38 meter longer uh, illumination uh, area in terms of distance and about an additional 10 meters either side of the vehicle for better visibility when you're trying to make that dark turn over in the corners here. Um, from an efficiency standpoint of view, the LED has been really great for us. About a 36% efficiency on the low beam and about a 60% efficiency on the high beam in terms of the amount of energy that's used for the similar uh, light output. So it's a, it's a big difference. Yeah. So I noticed the Pro yeah. also has different wheels over the 19s. It sure does. Uh, those are brand new, developed by our TRD group. And uh, those are actually uh, obviously a new style, but in addition to that, uh, some performance improvement, about 4.18 uh, pounds per wheel lighter. So for a total of about 16 pounds per vehicle. And as a result of that, uh, just the, with the slightly lighter wheels, we've also went back and uh, recalibrated and retuned the, the Fox suspension. This generation of Tacoma mm -hmm. is a couple years old now. It is. And mm -hmm. one of the big changes on this gen was, was the new engine. So the 3.5 liter and the six speed. That's correct. Can you talk to me a little bit why you guys went for the 3.5 liter versus the four liter in the Forerunner and some of the thinking behind that? Yeah, so of course that was done back in, like you said, in 2016. So nothing really new in this particular uh, model here. But uh, obviously we needed to have a new engine. Uh, this engine is uh, a lot more efficient in terms of its uh, fuel efficiency, also in terms of its emissions performance. So as we continue to look at the, the life cycle of this vehicle, it was important that we're able to meet those new targets. And, and that really helps us with this new, uh, uh, this new 2GR uh, engine. Coma has a different seating position than a lot of trucks and where your, your feet kind of stick out in front of you. It does. Uh, have you tried to change that on the 2020 model year? Absolutely, and that's uh, one of the things we're happy. This is not just on the Pro. We'll actually, you'll find that this will be standard on about 85% of all of our volume. So it goes all the way down to the SR5 grade. It's a 10-way power adjustable seat. Uh, the 10-way, of course, we have you know the, the track, fore aft, we have up and down, and then we have uh, the, the, the seat tilts uh, about nine and a half degrees either way. And of course, we have about 50 degrees of recline travel and then we have power lumbar. So that's how you get your total, when we say 10. Um, key point is it allows about a half an inch of adjustability down and another inch and a half up. Okay. And really what we we're trying to focus on, we heard you know, from some of our customers that they were looking for better, the better ability to sort of fit in the truck cabin. And this allows you now to have a different range of you know, height variation for, for shorter people with maybe shorter torso but longer legs. We can also adjust the cushion as we talked about to help with balancing pressure for long-term driving. You know, we have a lot of different folks, you know, different body shapes, different, you know, uh, body structures. So how do you try to give them the most flexibility? So we think this is a very important upgrade for this year, just to make sure that we're listening to what our customers are saying and making sure that we're uh, being responsive to what the market was asking for. So we've, we've got a lot of comments on the channel about kind of the overall design and maybe why the seats like this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of like, like the, the compared to competition, the, mm -hmm. the cab height versus ground clearance. Sure. Is there kind of a swept profile you're going for? Why is this design how it is? Yeah, I mean, again, this goes back to probably, you know, a couple uh, starting out with the, with the last uh, generation. And honestly, part of it is, you know, Tacoma is known for its off-road prowess. And so protecting for our ground clearance, our running, clou our running clearance, and then, of course, our, our fundamental rocker height um, sets the, the general seat height here. Obviously we need to package protect for overall clearance and ergonomics within the vehicle. Uh, and then, you know, this is something that again, adding power was just something in the original program was slightly outside the scope. But as we, we got down to it and said, okay, we're gonna need a little bit more height adjustability. We said, okay, this is a good, a good add. For 2020, the Tacoma has received a very mild refresh 
but there are some slight changes in the rear, such as the design of the taillights and integrated bed lights back here as well, which is a nice improvement over the 2019 model year. Of course, it's not an all-new truck. Powertrain is the same, so engine, transmission, driveline, it's all carryover. You know, sure. with the midsize segment really heating up with Ranger, mm -hmm. uh, Gladiator. Sure. Where does the Tacoma fit into that segment? I mean, it's been the leader for a long time. What's going to keep it the, the number one truck? Well, I think, like I said, there's a few things that we've done in this that uh, we've been trying to, you know, overall improve uh, the competitiveness. We're talking about our, our off-road reputation, I think, which you sort of talked a little bit about, and that's something that, you know, is important to us. Uh, adding the features like MTM, et cetera, those, those are going to start to help us. Um, in addition to that, I think, you know, we recognize that right now Tacoma, um, you know, part of it was making sure that we were keeping the model fresh, also, again, addressing some of the areas where we got feedback from, from our customers. But we're excited. More competition comes into the segment. I think that's good for everybody. I think it's going to continue to push us to, to maintain our leadership sort of mindset and how we want to keep the, 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 the product fresh over its remaining life cycle. Uh, but not only that, um, you know, it's been great because the, 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 uh, I guess the segment has been expanding as we've seen the entries come into it. So overall, I think competition in the segment is a healthy a healthy condition for everybody. So the next question, yeah. and it's a question we get a lot, is sure. why does Tacoma still have drum brakes in the rear? Uh, yeah, that's sort of uh, basically, uh, at least from our, our current platform, uh, again, carrying over from the 2016 model year, that was the decision that was made to, to keep those uh, drum brakes there. As we look down the road, obviously we'll continue to study and see where we, if we need to have disc brakes. Um, but right now that's sort of uh, inherent to this platform and we're no plan to change that anytime soon. But we looked at whether or not we wanted front uh, front disc, of course, and then and then rear drum. And part of the the, the reasoning and rationale that went into the, the sort of thinking behind that is the usage scenario. Obviously, in the compact series, like all trucks, we're we're biased in, in terms of our mass, which means to the front, which means we're going to be doing most of our braking, like most vehicles do, uh, with our front brakes. So discs are important for that, for the heat dis uh, dissipation that you get, superior performance. The drum brakes, of course, uh, when we look in the back, when we start thinking about things like towing, what we see in the full size segment, those become slightly more important because you got more weight on the rear brake and they're contributing more. The drum brake is really uh, a little bit more effective in the compact where we don't see people towing as heavy a weight as often, so the braking isn't uh, as uh, important in that particular area. But when you look at the contribution value, again, based on the weight distribution under normal circumstances, uh, the service cost and maintenance cost of the, of the disc brakes um, make them slightly a slight disadvantage in overall vehicle cost and in lifetime service and maintenance cost. Um, these trucks are definitely uh, made to be off-road. So another sort of you know advantage that we see from the drum brakes is they're less, uh, I guess the best way to say, less uh, affected by dirt and, and, and you know being in the off-road environment. So those are some of the reasons why we chose to stay with drum on the, on the compact truck. So are there any differences in the 2020 model year um, as we start moving back toward the rear of the truck? Uh, we're upgrading our to the new uh, head unit, which I think you've seen. Yep. So this is our, our 17CY multimedia uh, suite. Um, this provides us with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, something that a lot of, again, listening to the feedback from many of our customers was something that they really want. Uh, so you'll have that ability. We increase you to now to uh, an eight inch screen. Um, in addition to that, uh, we've added PVM, uh, panoramic view, as well as MTM, multi-terrain uh, monitor. Uh, that, now the multi-terrain and the, and the PVM are integrated in our off-road package, our ORP package. What we do when we bring MTM into it, it's really focused on off-road. And what it does is it uses that front camera to look down. So not only do you see what's in front of you, but what's, what's right in front of the tires. And it allows you as you're you know, basically uh, progressing over an obstacle, for example, crossing a log or approaching uh, an obstacle like we were doing yesterday, rock crawling, the ability to sort of see how that's coming in and then allow you to have better control over, over the vehicle. Gotcha. Uh, and that is an off-road feature that is uh, available uh, in the nice. four wheel uh, drive indication and basically four low. Uh, so really for, for off-roading, it's not meant to be used at speed, but it's something else to help, you know, again, pairing that with our crawl and with our multi-train uh, select features, really trying to provide or improve the overall prowess of this vehicle off-road. So that was really important feature that we added. Gotcha. Gotcha. So on this Pro, I noticed we have mm -hmm. kind of the desert air intake. It does have the desert air intake. On these trails that we were running at, you saw a lot of dust coming down in here. Get it up a little bit higher and out of that dust area. So really this was inspired from like the desert racing um, 
activity and and this was something we thought that not only looked really cool but also was functional you'll notice uh, there is actually a, a hole right here in the in the fender panel and it goes directly to your air box so a lot of folks asked is it there for aesthetics or actual you know uh, functional purpose but this one actually does so actually draw near we've gotten a few questions about this air intake in particular number one question is how do you avoid filling up with water how does that work yeah so uh, of course uh, as the as it comes down here you'll see there'll be drain holes in uh, different places throughout and then at the bottom where water would tend to uh, accumulate it allows for that water to escape I think you can actually see, see. there's a whole set of uh, drain holes oh, yeah. like right there for example okay yep so you're never really in danger of of getting water into the actual intake that's right that's right okay and then the second question we get a lot is mm -hmm. it looks almost like it would be a performance improvement because it looks like it's forcing air down mm -hmm. into the engine is there any performance gain with it um fundamentally not so different now because ultimately we're still pulling air we're coming into the same uh the same uh air box part of our requirement was to make sure that the input and output of the air and the pressure balance was exactly the same so not truly a, a ram air application but getting cleaner air which is, is certainly more important and that can certainly help in those areas when you're uh, you know trail driving or whatever and and you're having uh, you know a cleaner air coming into the filter box you were mentioning that this is actually a different fender to fit the intake that's right exactly so this is a unique fender uh, basically we have a separate operation we punched the hole for this the ships from uh, out of our manufacturing facility like this but then at our TLS facility then we install the uh, we make the connection to the air box and we make the uh, the rest of the installation for the or for the desert air intake. so in terms of this truck though the yeah. 2020 what's your what are you most proud of what do you think you can put your name on and say that that's what I did and that's what I'm most excited about sure well you know at Toyota we really try to do things from a I'll say from a team perspective certainly as the chief engineer it's it's important that you set the vision for the for the product and what we want to do I think what our number one objective was um, for the 2020 was to make sure that we had something that we could bring to the table that was going to be competitive that was going to address some of the areas where we felt that the vehicle wasn't meeting the um, uh, maybe wasn't meeting uh, what some of our customer expectations were in terms of uh, their feedback that they gave us. So we'd really like, you know, this or we'd really approve that. So really, I think um, our biggest uh, success in this is really just uh, we've really looked at some of the top hitting um, items uh, in terms of what, you know, customers said we'd, we'd, see, we'd like to see some improvement in sort of that Toyota continuous improvement spirit. We really looked at this as, uh, as an opportunity to address those. So I think to be able to, to sort of pick each one of those kind of like the highest ranking uh, areas where we, you know, got some customer uh, opportunity. Uh, to me, that's, that's, that's sort of the success story here. Um, this wasn't an overall, you know, this was a, a, a small minor change in terms of overall content. Um, but we did get to address a lot of those other issues. So uh, a lot of, you know, we had, we had some folks that were saying they didn't think the, the beams were high enough in terms of brightness. And we had some folks that were talking about some of our, our drivability, um, some uh, busy shift. And so we were able to do some tuning and some calibration to the, to the engine and to the, uh, the drive software to, to improve some of those areas. So little things, uh, you know, not, uh, not earth shattering things and probably not super exciting to write about, but what we think is really important to making sure that we're always in, always delivering a great product. So on this 2020, you mentioned mm -hmm. transmission programming. Has that mm -hmm. been altered? Uh, there has been some, uh, yeah, so in, in 2019 and going into this, there have been some, uh, some modifications and tuning to uh, the, drive, um, the drive software. And so it's allowed us to uh, improve some of our busy shift between fifth and sixth gear, especially at uh, sort of highway cruising speeds. Um, we've made, changed, uh, made a few other changes as well to the pedal map and to a few other things to help, uh, uh, I think, uh, improve responsiveness in terms of acceleration. Uh, so really they were, um, uh, I think, important improvements to help, uh, I think, refine the, the drive uh, experience to the way customers are really using the vehicles in the market. Perfect, but in terms of power output, towing capacity, that's all pretty much the The, the numbers that you'll see have, are, are unchanged, that's right. Gotcha. Yeah. And really, if there's any changes uh, in terms of power output, they would not show up on uh, like a spec sheet. It would be sort of a dynamic power uh, you know, uh, specification change where we'll change limits, for example, in between a, uh, a shift point or something like that, but nothing in terms of uh, peak power or anything like that was changed. This is by far my favorite new addition to the 2020 Tacoma. It's this army green available on the pro. It actually replaces the voodoo blue, but let me know in the comment section below, which one you get, what are you doing? You coming in? Do I get to come in? I get yeah. to make some comments here? It's the same old truck. They finally got around to giving you new headlights. Now they're selling us a 2020. See ya. That's John Perley Huffman with 
every buff book. He's a great guy, he's been doing this for a long time. But as always, let me know in the comment section below, is this truck too old like he said it is? Thanks for watching.